Okay, in this video, we're going to show you how to recharge a sealed system. And on some of these newer Sub Zeros, there are no process ports to get into the system. The older machines had a little valve here you could get in, uh, but that is no longer possible. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put a line tap valve on the system to drain the gas out and then we're going to cut that off and put a process port on here so stand by okay these are the the line tap valves that I use there are other brands out there but I like these the best I've been using these over 50 years they're made by Subco and it comes it's a, this is a three in one so you can use this on quarter inch, five sixteenths inch, and three eighths line. Basically, uh, you just take out these bolts, and then you want to put the adapter in there for quarter inch line because those lines, the process port on that line there on refrigerator we're working on is a quarter inch. This is a quarter inch spacer. That's a 5 sixteenths and then for 3 eighths you just use it without any spacer. So you put the quarter inch spacer in there and then we're going to put this together like that. Put the bolts in, um, pierce the tubing and then we're going to hook up our uh, recovery system and pull all the Freon out of the system. Tighten up, finger tight, take your tool, I use this little ratchet here, this is just a temporary installation, once we take all the Freon out, we will take this off, don't over tighten them, but then don't under tighten them either. Okay, that's on there. So the next thing you want to do is pierce the tubing by turning the center pin in until it stops. Okay. Now before you open it, you need to hook up your, your gauge. So we're hooking up our compound gauge here on the low side of the system. And then we're going to open this up, make sure the valve's closed. We'll open this up. Okay, so you can see that. Alright, that's enough. Don't take the pin all the way out. So now the next step would be to hook this into our recovery system. So low side. Now a lot of guys will use a, a recovery tank and pump the, pump the refrigerant into a tank. And it's perfectly okay to do that. That's probably the preferred way. But I have my own way of doing things. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to recover that Freon and since it's not contaminated, we're going to put it into this charging column, make the repair on the sealed system, and then we'll see if we have enough in here, we'll just put it back in. So you put this up to the discharge line here. You open up your valves. Turn on your recovery. And you open up your gauge. And you let it pull down. Uh, it's recommended at least 10 inches in the vacuum. 10 inches of mercury. The proper terminology. But 
You want to make sure you're in the vacuum before you open up the system so as not to ventilate any refrigerant into the air. It's illegal, it's not right. Okay, so while that's doing that, let me explain to you a few other things. These are the filter dryers. This filter dryer is attached to the suction line on the freezer compressor. And this filter dryer, this is the uh, heat exchanger. It's a capillary tube. If you follow it around, you see it's clamped right here. This is the suction line for the refrigerator side. So when you cut these open or out, make sure, double check, make sure you're cutting the right system. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a lot of extra work there. So let me get a light and see if you can see a better view of this. Okay, a little better. I mean, I could take this whole top off, but that's a lot of work. If you can see underneath here, this is the suction line. You can see the suction line coming out of the compressor back here. And you can see that little cap tube is attached to the suction line underneath this insulation. And it's soldered to the suction line. And that's called a heat exchanger. And when it comes out, it comes into the filter dryer. But actually the flow is from here through the cap tube down into the evaporator coil. And then it comes back out through the suction line. So if you don't know anything about sealed systems, I'm just trying to give you a primer to show you how, how these things are set up. So after we've taken all the Freon out, we're going to cut this dryer out and put a new dryer in here because it's recommended that whenever you go into the sealed system, you replace the dryer. So that'll be our next step. Okay, so now we're down to 20 inches of mercury. When I shut the valve, it's still in the vacuum, so there's no Freon in the system. So we could shut off our tank and our recovery. You can disconnect it. We have these valves closed. We can disconnect this. Put that on the side. Put our caps back on. Protect the threads. Unplug this. And we're done. Now let's see what we got. We pulled out, it looks like two ounces of gas. Two ounces of gas is low. Let's see what this thing takes. The refrigerator takes seven ounces of free on 134A. So it's, it's low. That's for sure. All right, so let's work on the dryer. Okay, so we're going to cut this cable tie here. And this is the filter dryer for the freezer. Just double check. Okay, so we cut this cap tube here. And we're going to cut this up here. And that's the old dryer. So when you solder this back in, make sure you don't squash that line. Score it. This is how I do things. I mean, other people have their own ways. This is how I do it. I, I score it and then I break it off. And now I don't know if you can see that, but I can see that it's not crimped. It's open. And this one will just, this is not a problem. So let's continue. Okay. 
Okay, these are the process ports. What you need to do before you put this on is take the Schrader valve out. It's got a little nylon seal on there and if you heat this thing up you could melt the seal. And then you take a quarter inch or whatever wire brush and clean the inside because this is the part that you're going to solder onto the tubing. This is a brass fitting. Okay, now. Okay, so I got a piece of sandpaper here. I'm going to clean this joint really well. That seems pretty good. All right, this is the kind of flux I use. It's stay silv, white brazing flux. Put a little dab on there. Okay. So now we're going to get our torch. I'm going to braze that on. Stand by. Okay, this is my my torch. This is an MC tank. It's filled with acetylene. This is a turbo torch and what it does is it mixes oxygen from the air and makes a hotter flame. This is a number five tip. It's a typical one I use and um, we also need, uh, let's see, we'll open this up and make sure we have pressure. Okay, we have a little pressure in there and then we'll get our solder. Now I use Stay Silv 56. To me, it's the best solder out there, brazing solder. You can also use the rods. I have some of those rods in here somewhere. But my, my preference is here. Okay, so let's take our tank. Turn it on. Make sure there's nothing flammable in the area. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a protective cover. I have this fireproof cloth. You can buy these at refrigeration supply houses. I'm just going to put that in there to protect the compressor. I'm going to turn on my torch. Now the very tip of the, the blue flame is the hottest part. Okay, it's starting to glow now. I don't know if you can see that. That's it. That's all you need. Let that cool down. And we'll start working on the dryer.